Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comment video. We're going to be talking about both Polaris 10, in this case the RX 480, as well as some stuff on AMD's upcoming GPU architecture known as Vega 10, which of course is going to be the really high-end cards, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So, what about the RX 480? Well, finally, we have a leaked GPU Z screenshot. Now, I want to point out, of course, this is not official, so this has not come from official review channels, it is not from AMD, so at the end of the day, it could be doctors, it could be fake. So, if you want to pay attention to this, or you want to say it's fake, that's completely up to you. But essentially, we're seeing 2,304 shaders, which we know is that's pretty much confirmed. 14nm, that's confirmed. RX 480, well, obviously that's the GPU. 256-bit bus with 256 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. We've known that for a long time. And it's the 8 gigabyte model on show with a 1266 megahertz clock. All right, so all of that is so far so good. The interesting thing, however, from all of this is it's Samsung producing the memory, which isn't super surprising. But the fact is, we're seeing 32 ROPs and 144 texture mapping units. Now, the question is, will there be a big drop in performance because of the ROPs? Well, unfortunately, we don't know the efficiency or what AMD have done exactly to the back end. Now, essentially, ROPs are, and this is a vastly simplified version of this, but ROPs are responsible for forming the final image on screen and more ROPs typically result in better quality anti-aliasing and other such special effects and could also have an impact in memory times and stuff like that. So 32 may be considerably fewer, it's half the amount of say Hawaii or Fiji, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to get much worse performance simply because it's a different iteration of GCN, so there is a lot of efficiency improvements, which we'll get to in just a moment. 144 TMUs is about what we'd expected, if I'm totally honest with you. So, I guess the next logical thing that we should discuss, and it depends on how much credence you want to give to this, but there are quite a few reports going about at the moment on the internet that... Polaris has had a lot of improvements in the back end that we've known about, but one individual on Semi Accurate claims to ha actually have the Polaris in his possession and believes that pipeline stalls are vastly reduced on Polaris. Now, if that's true, even badly optimized programs, at least according to this individual, um, the hardware just, and I quote, tries to solve the uh, problem, tries to solve the problem. And this behavior reminds me of the Larrabee, and now we have it, not from Intel, but hardware is here to solve a lot of problems. Now, what this might be is a combination of the various schedulers, the um, pipeline efficiency improvements, the uh, various primitive discard accelerators, the um, prefetch, instruction prefetch, and I don't want to make this video go into a whole tech analysis of this stuff, because we've talked about it a couple of times before, but essentially it means that you should get less stalls in the graphic pipeline. What this means is that basically all rendering on screen is based upon time, how many milliseconds it takes to complete an operation before the next one can continue. So for example, if something, if you're trying to draw a scene and animate that scene at 60 fps then you've got to maintain or do that within about 16.6 .6 milliseconds so for example if you get a lot of frames which take like let's say 20 milliseconds or 25 milliseconds then frame rate is going to go down so what you have to do is consistently have the pipe the graphics pipeline as full as possible which is one of the reasons that directx 12 Vulcan and even Mantle were so important because they start pushing more workload to the GPU from the CPU. The CPU tells the GPU what to do, but then it's down to the GPU to do that effectively, and it will then push that workload across various shaders and various other parts of the card. So in this instance, the shaders might have to say do compute work where it might have to calculate physics or it might have to calculate lighting or whatever. 
but of course it also needs to do basic things like for example draw this box draw that box and you know animate this character and whatever other stuff so in this instance from what we can understand um, if you want to take this guy's word for it it would appear that the efficiencies of the card are coming to play but with all of that said i want to talk about vega 10. so for those who are uninitiated with the rumors or the um roadmap i guess of vega vega is the next gpu it's the card after polaris so polaris is the rx 480 the 460 and finally the 470 vega 10 is going to continue the legacy it's still 14 nm there are a lot of questions regarding uh vega 10 not least of which is it going to be the 500 series or is it going to be continuing the 400 series for example is it going to be the 490, the 490X? Will it be the replacement Furies? Will all of the cards be high bandwidth memory too? Because in one slide it shows Polaris, HBM2, um, so, I'm sorry, it shows, um, it shows Vega, HBM2, but does that mean all the cards in the Vega lineup? Theoretically, yes, because it would be an awful lot of work to redesign the entire core but maybe they've got different cores so some for GDDR5X some cores for HBM2 we don't know I guess it depends on how many different iterations of Vega there are with all of that said we do know that it's going to be a monster supposedly the highest end of the chips is going to be 4096 stream processors if you do some calculations on that this card is going to put out a ridiculous level of performance um, and honestly it should most likely ruffle stomp the current Furies and possibly even compete with the Fury Duos especially if the clocks uh, go high enough the reason we know by the way it's got 4096 stream processors well no is a strong word but at least we're given a good indication that it is is because of a leak from a LinkedIn profile where an engineer said they, they designed it but, that's slightly off the side. Raja Kadori has decided to tell us that they were in, he was in Shanghai and in Vega mode. That he is incredibly proud of our GPU design team here in Shanghai that delivered the Polaris family and the next Vega. Design team is thrilled with your response, celebrated a milestone with the team, long way to go before you see it. And basically, it's the Vega 10 celebration. So obviously, that means that we're starting to see Vega 10 get closer and closer to, well, I guess, our homes. The big question is, what exactly was the celebration? For example, how much further along in development does it need to get until we get it? There were some rumours that we could see it this year. Now some rumours are saying early next year. Some rumours are saying later next year. I guess, ultimately, we don't really know what AMD are planning because they're being really 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 cagey and believe me I've tried to find out this information and they're not telling me a damn thing and they're not telling anyone a damn thing which is not exactly a surprise um, so for example there are some questions that we could start asking and some of these you'll probably be singing along with me like is there going to be an RX 480X Will the RX 480X contain 40 compute units or is 36 the most? Early reports said that Polaris 10 could go up to 40 compute units. Now we're only seeing the release of 36. So maybe they weren't getting the yields, enough yields for 40. Or maybe that was what they intended the design to be. Unfortunately, until we get the damn GPU and start to actually analyze it and, well, even then, maybe the SKU they've released, that's the highest it goes. It's a lot of questions, and unfortunately, this is one of those things where you can do technical analysis on it up the wazoo, but there's not enough information because no one's confirming roadmaps, no one's actually saying more than it's coming, which kind of sucks, and it's kind of ironic that we know more about Polara, um, I'm sorry, we know more about Scorpio and the Neo, theoretically, than what we do about some of the technology inside them. But that's just kind of how it is. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.